Greetings, Earthlings, and welcome back to Podcastage. Today, I am back with a review of the Austrian Audio OC16. If you are interested in this microphone, it will cost you around $400. Like always, I'll throw some affiliate links in the description down below. For this video, I am running the microphone directly into the Focusrite 18i 22nd Gen, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, gain set at around 245. I won't do any post-processing, but check the lower third or the doobly-doo to see if I boosted it a little bit in post. Now let's talk about what comes in the box. First off, you're going to get a zippered storage box. You will, of course, get the microphone. You will get a microphone clip with a 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a shock mount with a second 5 8 to 3 8 inch microphone stand adapter, a little bit of documentation, and a sticker. Then as far as the build quality, the microphone feels absolutely fantastic. Just like its big brother, the OC818, it has an all-metal chassis and then a very firm metal mesh grille, which has minimal give to it, which is surprising given the surface area. You have a three-way switch on the front to engage a 40 or 160 hertz high-pass filter. As we move around the microphone, there are no other buttons or switches. On the bottom of the mic, you will find the XLR port, and the OC16 is made in China. Then as far as the specs, the OC16 has a cardioid polar pattern, a frequency response of 20 Hz to 20 kHz, a sensitivity of around minus 39 dB, a self noise of 14 dBA, a max SPL of 148 dB, an impedance of 275 ohms, and a phantom power requirement of plus 48 volts. Now I'm spinning around the OC16 to 90 degrees so you can hear the off-axis rejection and coloration. Continuing around to 180 degrees, this is the rear of the mic. Continuing around to the second 90 degree angle, here we are. And then rotating and ending at the front of the microphone. Now let's go ahead and test the plosive rejection of this thing. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Please bring pizza pronto. Now I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect and all the clickies of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about six inches away from the microphone with it pointed at the corner of my mouth, and here is how it's sounding. Now I'm about one foot away from the OC16. Now I'm about two feet away from the OC16, and about four feet away from the Austrian Audio OC16. Now I am typing on a keyboard with Gatoron blue switches to see how much of my voice versus how much of the keyboard it picks up. And for the gaming folk, this is the sad W and the spacebar key. Zzz. Now here is how the OC16 sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a well-treated room. And here is how the OC16 sounds about six inches away from my mouth in a completely untreated space. Next, in order to see how effective the microphone and the provided shock mount are at rejecting shocks, I'll start by tapping on my desk to see how much of that noise it can reject. And then I will tap on the boom arm. Now, because I'm an annoying person, I am going to tap on the body of the microphone to see if there are any kind of resonant frequencies. Again, I am right on top of the microphone to exaggerate the proximity effect, and I do not have the high-pass filter engaged, and here is how it's sounding. Now I have engaged the 40 Hz high pass filter, which shouldn't have too much impact on the boominess when I am this close to the microphone. So let's go ahead and jump up to 160 Hz. And now I have the 160 Hz high pass filter engaged, and you should hear a lot of that low end get rolled off and cleaned up. There you go, that's the high pass filter demo for you. Next, like I always do, I'm going to do a quick spoken word comparison between the microphone that we're reviewing and a handful of other microphones that are available so we can hear how it stacks up against the competition and hear it in the context of the marketplace. Bara.
Starting on the OC16, I have the high pass filter off, 6 inches away, gain set at 245, 24-bit, 48 kilohertz, and here is how it sounds. First up, I have the Audio-Technica AT2020. This costs around $100. I am 6 inches away. My gain is still set at 245. Make sure to check the lower third, but here is how this sounds. Let's go back and do some more comparisons. Back again on the OC16 for a palette cleanser, nothing has changed. Let's go to another mic. Next, I am on the Rode NT1 5th Gen. This goes for $250. Again, I am 6 inches off. My gain is still set at 245 as wind tries to blow my home over. But here is how this sounds. Let's go back and do some more. All right, this is the OC16. That's how it sounds. High pass filter off still. Let's go to another microphone. Next, I am on the Lewitt LCT440 Pure. This costs around $290 now. Six inches off, gain still set at 245. Definitely check the lower third to see how much I boosted it because this is a lot louder than the 16, so I will have to boost it less. Let's go back to the 16 and do a couple more comparisons. All right, back again on the Austrian Audio OC16, still six inches away, gain still set at around 245, and that has been your palate cleanser. Now I am on the AKG C214, no pad, no filter engaged, six inches off, gain still set at around 245, and this costs around $465. Let's go back to the OC16. All right, we have another palate cleanser for you. This is the mic we're reviewing, the OC16. What a shocker. Let's go to another one. Now I am on the SE Electronics SE4400A. This is a multi-pattern condenser microphone, and it has that same squarish form factor as the OC16. This costs around $500. Cardioid mode, no pad, no high-pass filter. Six inches off, gain still set at 245, and there you go. Let's go back to the OC16 and do two more comparisons. We don't have too many more to go, so here is a palette cleanser, OC16. Let's go to the penultimate microphone. Now we are on the big brother of the OC16, the OC818. This is multi-pattern. This also goes for $1,250, more than three times the cost. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filter. This is made in Austria, 16 made in China. This is what it sounds like compared to a microphone that is less than one-third the cost. Do you hear three times the price difference in the sound quality? Let me know. Let's go back and do one final comparison. And that means we have one microphone to go. You all know what it's going to be, but here is your OC16 palette cleanser. Check the lower third. Let's go to the last mic. And wrapping up the comparison section, I am now on the Neumann. Hello, Neumann! U87AI. This goes for about $3,700. Cardioid mode, no pad, no filters, six inches off. Drop the gain to about noon, midnight, 12 o'clock, because this is a hot boy. And there you go. That's the comparison section. Let us go to the music section. So many bots in your face They're alien bots from outer space Let's just go to the conclusion I have a brutal headache and it's probably due to a lack of oxygen because the alien bots are suffocating me. So <laughs> let's just go to the conclusion. Please save me from this. I don't know what I'm saying. If I had to summarize the OC-16 
I would say that it sounds like a less smooth and less refined OC-18 or OC-818. And that kind of makes sense because that's exactly what it is. And first up, as far as pros, I think the build quality of this microphone comes across quite sturdy. It is reassuring. I don't have any real concerns with it. I also think the high pass filter is a nice to have. The off axis coloration on this thing is relatively inoffensive. You're also getting an insanely high max SPL at 148 dB and the inclusion of a microphone clip, a shock mount, two adapters and a soft shell zippered storage case is really nice. Then as far as cons, for a condenser microphone, the sensitivity is a bit on the low side. It also didn't do the best job at shock rejection, even when it is in the provided shock mount. And speaking of the shock mount, the mount is made out of plastic and I think it feels a bit flimsy, so I am not going to be holding my breath that this holds up for years and years of heavy use. And now what about my overall thoughts and opinions of the OC16? On the electric guitar, I quite liked it. The bass frequencies did get to be a bit overpowering, but a cut around 130 hertz really helped clean that up. The mids were relatively neutral, not scooped, not overly boosted, and then we have this nice brightness in the treble and air without being overbearing, but that gives us this really nice aggression and really nice detail on the electric. Trick. Then on the acoustic guitar, it is a very similar story. I found the bass and low mids to be a bit overpowering. For this instrument, I wanted to cut around 180 hertz, and that made it sound a lot more balanced. The upper mids were relatively neutral, maybe a touch recessed, but pretty neutral overall. And then because of the treble and air boost, you get some really nice attack and detail and articulation on the acoustic. Next up for singing, I think that's my favorite application for this microphone, but again, I found the bass and low mids to be a touch much. On my voice, I wanted to cut between 200 and 275 hertz to clean that up, and that made it sound a lot better. The upper mids weren't overly forward, they weren't congested, they were nice and open and relatively balanced, and then you get this pushed top end because of the treble and air boost, but it doesn't come across sounding too artificial or too sharp or piercing. Finally, on spoken word, I think you can get a very powerful bass section out of this thing, especially if you close mic. The mids were a touch recessed, which I find appealing on a voice like mine, which is typically quite nasally and mid forward. And then the top end is bright, it is articulate, it is detailed. It is certainly not the smoothest sound out there. As far as a smoother sounding condenser mic, I would say the SE4400A or the OC818, but that's three times the price. So not the smoothest, but for this application, I think it works quite nicely. And to wrap up, would I recommend the Austrian Audio OC16? Yeah. I don't see any deal breakers with this microphone, so if you love the sound of it, or if you're looking for a slightly more affordable option to pair with your OC818 or OC18, I say go for it. With that being said, I do need to point out that the OC16 didn't blow my mind the same way that the 818 did because it doesn't have that same super polished sound quality to it. It doesn't have that same insane feature set. This is a bare bones and stripped down version of the 18 and 818 and it kind of shows. I do still think the OC16 is a very worthy competitor as an all around studio microphone because I found it very workable and pretty enjoyable on every single sound source that I tried it on. I just think it's going to need to take a bit of EQ to get the best sound out of it. If you found this video fun, interesting, or helpful, go to give me a thumbs up, hated it, big ol' thumbs down, and I will talk to you in a week or so. Thank you so much for watching. Thank you so much for listening. I will talk to you later. Bye-bye. Whoa, whoa, whoa.